Up first this evening, health officials are discussing whether to provide security for the nurse who administered the AstraZeneca vaccine to senior journalist Michael Sharp. Mr. Sharp was hospitalized 10 days after getting the vaccine, but since his death on Tuesday, threats against the nurse have skyrocketed, forcing authorities to urge calm. Giovanni Dennis reports. A sharp fallout, a moment that started with smiles and warmth, is now causing pain and sadness. Ten days after getting this shot of the AstraZeneca vaccine, Michael Sharp was hospitalized. He died Tuesday. And now, the nurse who administered the vaccine is now a target and has been since March 14. Since his admission in March, the nurse has been getting on and off threats saying that it is the fact that he got the vaccine why he has been admitted. And then yesterday, when news came of his passing, these threats became more and more threatening and more dangerous. More dangerous because they are death threats and the perpetrators are blowing up her personal phone. She got text messages Persons accessed her phone. I don't know how they got her number, but they have been calling her. And, you know, they have been accusing her of causing Michael's death. Mrs. Edwards Henry finds the threats unfortunate and the nurse in question is now petrified. She is crushed. She is demotivated. She feels as if all her work that she has done is all for naught. She was on the verge of tears when I spoke to her yesterday. The threats have caused a fallout among nurses who feel demotivated. There are also discussions over the safety of the nurse. I spoke with the permanent secretary yesterday. I spoke with the chief nursing officer in the Ministry of Health yesterday. And that was something that came out. Um, it is, I know, being discussed at that level. And if there there becomes a need for security, I'm sure that the Ministry of Health will put that in place. The Health Minister in Parliament Wednesday condemned such actions. Those members of the public who are so inclined or motivated to refrain from spreading false information and worse, verbally attacking healthcare workers who have done their jobs to date with distinction. Dr. Tofton said people against the vaccination are looking for any reason to support their movement. The issues around persons who have died uh, having taken the COVID, the AstraZeneca vaccine, and the links between the vaccine and death have featured prominently with um, a certain degree of venom uh, by those who are looking for a reason to promote the anti-vaccine movement. And I want to just ask persons to desist and all well-thinking Jamaicans to condemn the effort, the, those efforts. Speculations about the cause of Mr. Sharp's death have been rife, with people seeking to make a connection with the vaccine. The exact cause of Mr. Sharp's death is not yet known, although he declared that he was a heart patient. Giovanni Dennis, TVJ News. Blazing figure. Mr. Sharp has, in Jamaica's shifting media landscape, been a constant for over 40 years and has taught and mentored many of Jamaica's new cadre of journalists. An investigative journalist, he is known for asking probing questions and demanding answers, even when the truth is uncomfortable. Mr. Sharp is heavily invested in seeking out and telling the truth heavily invested in what happens in the lives of Jamaicans, heavily invested in the future of Jamaica. Hi, I'm Michael Sharp. i um, been covering crime scenes for many, many years. Um, has developed a form of immunity, if you may, and therefore it's easier for you to deal and go to the next one. However, it is always troubling, always troubling when one has to address a crime scene involving a child or children. It really gets to your gut and it is very, very challenging to deal with even days after. Because you consider most of all the innocence. 
and you ask the question, why? And you start to put through your mind the different images of your own children, your own family's children, and those who you know and those who you care for. And therefore, it makes covering a scene, a tragic scene with a child, that more difficult. The one that comes to mind, certainly, is one that was done in St. Catherine. It's alleged that a man of unsound mind carved off a face of a five-year-old. And the child was found in bushes. It was a very moving night for, for myself and my cameramen. We, we shed tears because it was not only tragic, but it was callous and brutal and always will remain in my mind. But what it does, though, at the same time, is to cause you to think about the parents. And that is why we cover it. We cover it because it is not in the natural order of things. Children should bury their parents. And when parents are burying children, there is something fundamentally wrong. And we carry it not only because it is news and will be carried, but we do so with the hope that somehow, somewhere, it might reflect on those who have a chance to save, to take care of, to find out where are your children, where is your child. Few reporters understand the intricacies of Jamaica's political landscape like Mr. Sharp, and he has nimbly navigated its potential landmines even as he continuously worked to keep the electorate well informed. He has held many senior positions in the RGR Communications Group, including senior news editor, news anchor for TVJ, and hosted a number of in-depth news shows. He is seen by many as an exceptional journalist whose passion for news makes him a respected voice. Welcome back to a special edition.